Uh, today's reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke's um, chapter 13, uh, verses 18 to 30. Jesus asked, what is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it with? It is like this. A man takes a mustard seed and sows it in his field. The plant grows and becomes a tree and the birds make their nest in its branches. Again, Jesus asked, what shall I compare the kingdom of God with? It is like this. A woman takes some yeast and mixes it with 40 liters of flour until the whole batch of dough rises. Jesus went through towns and villages, teaching the people and making his way towards Jerusalem. Someone asked him, sir, will just a few people be saved? Jesus answered them, do your best to go in through the narrow door because many people will surely try to go in but will not be able. The master of the house will get up and close the door. Then when you stand outside and begin to knock on the door and say, open the door for us, sir, he will answer you, I don't know where you come from. Then you will answer, we ate and drank with you, you thought in our town. But he will say again, I don't know where you come from. Get away from me, all you wicked people. How you will cry and grind your teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God while you are thrown out. People will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and sit down at the feast in the kingdom of God. Then those who are now last will be first, and those who are now first will be last. Barakamor. Good evening all. Uh, my name is Riju. Um, I'm one of the members of St. Gregorius Indian Orthodox Church, Watford, Ireland. Um, I would like to thank OCYM leaders um, and all the priests who are present here, especially our church vicar Matthew Chen, um, who is leading the prayer today. Um, today's Bible reading um, is from um, St. Luke's, where Jesus gives us two parables um, comparing the kingdom of God. Um, before I begin, this is the first time I ever done something like this, so kindly forgive me if I make any mistakes or even if my message isn't um, very clear. Um, but um, rather than focusing on today's Bible reading, I would like to share a thought, uh, which is kind of a general theme um, during the Lent season, I think. Um, Lent is the time um, where we learn and read about different miracles Jesus performed. Every Sunday, we read and meditate upon different miracles he did. Uh, the thought is, when do we call an experience a miracle? Oftentimes, um, we will read stories of people like um, people narrowly escapes an accident or like an earthquake, or maybe on a different level. We might know people who are like terminally ill um, they try different treatments. They don't have any hope and um, they go to different churches, do prayers. And after a while, you might hear the testimony saying, okay, everything is gone, they're doing well, they're healthy. We definitely call such experiences miracles. But the question is, should we be limiting calling miracles to just these experiences? Um, if you think about it, of all the people uh, who went to bed yesterday, not all of them woke up today morning. We've been to work today, or some of you have been to the college, came back home safe, attending the prayer, and going to bed safely and peacefully, isn't that a miracle? We don't take these things as miracle because we take things granted. Uh, we imagine this is the way things are supposed to be, but in our heart we know um, this is not how it works. Um, if you take a moment and before you go to bed tonight and look back at your life, I can guarantee you that there would be numerous instances in your life where you had thought, okay, this is it. Um, I don't know how to solve this problem. And um, there is no solution. You're worried, you're stressed. Um, you do all the prayer, you do some offerings and sacrifices. And after a couple of days, you don't really know how, but the issue got solved. Um, for a moment or two, you might think, okay, this is a blessing, this is a work of God, uh, but soon um, you'll start worrying about something else. That feeling of miracle, that feeling of blessing is gone from our, um, is gone from our life. So can we be a bit more um, grateful to God, um, not just the times when we get something from him, like every single day. If we can look at our uh, look at every day uh, as an opportunity from him, every night as a blessing from him, then I think we will be more grateful to him every single day. In that mindset, let's say we are going to the church or when we sit down for our evening prayer, we'll be so silent in our heart um, that we will be more like, God, I cannot ask you anything anymore. You know me, you bless me abundantly. 
Um, I'm not really saying we don't really need any life-changing miracles in our life. We are not that strong in our faith. We have our weaknesses, um, but we can still be grateful to him because life itself is a one big miracle. We don't really need him to perform some life-altering things to be more faithful to him. We should be um, grateful to him every single day. I hope the Lent um, and the Passion Week will help us to change that outlook and be um, courageous and sometimes even if it doesn't do anything we still be patient for him to know what he wants from us also just want to remind all of us sometimes uh, let's say we need some miracle in our life that particular miracle will lead us through some pain that's just an unavoidable part of it imagine the story of the person and um, the blind person and um, we read about him last sunday uh, we should read his story on the background of the Jewish culture. Like we all know, during that time, whatever disabilities or illness you have, uh, they're all considered as a punishment for the sins you committed. Um, I don't know his age, but let's say he's in his 30s. So imagine all the pain, the sufferings, the hardship he went through until the day he met Jesus. His story could have been different, um, you know, like... Um, he lost, he, it could be something like he lost his vision last week or maybe last year, but no, he was born blind and he went through the, all the pain for maybe 30 or I don't know, maybe 25, 30 years until the day he met Jesus. And even Jesus' life wasn't any different. His biggest miracle was his resurrection. To do that, he went through pain like no one else did in the history. He went through a lot of pain, suffering and hardship to do that miracle. So. Next time when we face a crisis or a problem and we are praying for a miracle or um, hoping for a miracle, um, let's, let's all be ready um, for the pain that comes with it. But we still be grateful for him um, and happy in our heart. And let's hope uh, that somewhere along the road, we will also meet Jesus and he will be happy to bless us all, uh, bless our family. And he will um, invite us for the dinner with all the prophets and all the people who did everything right. Um, I, I pray to Holy Spirit um, to give us all that um, insight and um, to make us all stronger in our faith and make us grateful to him um, every single day. And um, thank you all. Thank you.